Hey guys, in case you're wondering why no videos lately, this is why. Time has finally come to rebuild the front steps. Delayed partly because of a shortage of lumber. Uh, there was a shortage to begin with between COVID and people working from home, staying at home and doing a lot of home improvements. And then we had a couple of tornadoes touch down in our area and a lot of people had to do some rebuilding. So it took me quite a while and I paid a lot to get these treads. So I needed two by 12s, eight feet long and pressure treated just don't exist in the entire area. These are cedar tone. You got to pay about an extra 12 bucks per board. So it's poor. And then I think they were gouging a little. So I ended up paying 32 bucks per step. I know that's insane, but winter's coming. I gotta get this done. So the original steps are seven feet wide. I gotta cut all these down. And originally there's just a stringer on either side and nothing in the middle. And I was wondering, uh, it, it, the steps sagged to begin with, but I was wondering why it wasn't even worse. That's because they went underneath the deck and drilled from behind in all of these boards into the back of the steps. I'm ripping all this out. I'm gonna try to cut a third stringer and secure it and run it down the middle to provide support and do this properly. What I would have really have loved to have done that would have made this a piece of cake is to buy pre-made stringers. But because of the height of this porch and the run of it, the standard ones don't work. Um, it, was, it was either the height or the width that's wrong. One dimension is perfect and the other isn't. It was really, really frustrating. These are in pretty decent condition. And they were cut out of two by 12s. And again, those are like impossible to find. Um, but I forked out the money to buy one extra for a stringer. And I'm going to try to reuse the two that are here and use them as templates to cut the third new one. So you see these, these boards, I forget what they call these, but the vertical boards they drilled. I had to crawl underneath behind the stairs and take out all the screws they had drilled from behind into the edge of the board. Not the way to do it. Uh, but the biggest problem was the railings. They did a ridiculously bad job. They did the one thing you're never supposed to do, which is to cut a notch out of them. So they'd cut a notch out of the vertical posts and then just drove a couple lag bolts into this. In some cases, basically into nothing or just into this. And of course it all fell apart. You're supposed to cut a hole out of the step or notch out of the step, never cut the post, run the four by four and then bolt it in from the side of the stringer. And if you can, one from the front. So I got some big old one and a half by six lag bolts. I'll put two in on the side and one in from the front. I'm gonna move it back a little bit here so it also rests against this maximum support. And it looks like originally way back in the day someday had been mounted to this. It's kind of a Chicago thing in almost every house. The first step is cement and then wood from the, from the rest of the way. So it's subsided a little bit, <laughs> tilting down. So, um, and then the, the final really bad thing is the way they did the stringers. They should have used hangers into a joist in the back. They did not because they're not running right. They should like be up one level higher and then use joist hangers to attach them to uh, something behind. That's not what they have is there's like a post on the inside and it's secured this way and then the post sits on a concrete pad down there. Uh, so if I'm gonna run a third one down the middle, I think there's some cement underneath there I can rest one end on. But for the top in the middle, I don't know. I don't know what to attach it to behind. I think there's nothing behind this. So I thought maybe I could replace this with a joist that's longer and use joist hangers and, and support it that way. I don't know. Also, I couldn't find this board. Originally, it was a one by 10. Couldn't find any one by 10s. I got some one by eights. That's what these are. But uh, so that that is still to be determined. But right now, I'm just tearing everything down. And the front steps will just be out of commission for a while. Crazy how expensive all this stuff is too. So this pile of lumber, it's like 400 bucks, <laughs> believe it or not. 
Uh, so there are the one by eights. Those I got just regular old green tone. And these are the, the cedar tone. And to be fair, yes, they cost more. They look nicer. They last extra longer. They're ground contact. They're treated twice. So, you know, okay. So there'll be a contrast between woods, but hey, maybe that'll look nice. All this stuff, all the posts are for the two new posts at the end of the stairs. And that is to build hand railings, something else that was in short supply. I didn't really want to get the style. Or it's just an open channel. And then these are the balusters. They sell some that have pre-notched holes, so it saves you a little bit of time. Or, this is a pretty common style too. Couldn't find any. And then I got to figure out, okay, these are going to be at an angle, a hand railing. Going to need to cut all these posts at an angle. And then the quick and dirty way to do it is what they did here is to just drive a nail from the top. That'll make it look nice and not have nails protruding from the top of your handrail where people are going to be sliding their hand along. You secure it from the bottom with like a screw at an angle. But when you've just got a channel and you've got this, and it's going to, of course, slide around. So I know there's tricks with tacking it in place or using a clamp while well, you secure them better. But yeah, the, ra the railing is a little bit of a, to be determined. These posts will also need to be cut down. Uh, also, the longest railings I could find were six feet. The originals were seven feet. And I'd already planned on moving the posts back a little bit further closer to the house. But I hate to have to determine some of this stuff just because I can't get the materials I want. But, I mean, eventually this should all get rebuilt because it was not done very well. But for now, uh, I'm just going to try to reuse these old posts. I mean, it really just ripped this entire deck out. But, you know, that's, that's for another day. So the way they did these is really, <laughs> they just drove screws in. 45 degree angle into whatever's behind here. And that was it. It's not the most secure thing. But it's, it's more secure than that hand railing was. That was just a joke. Alright, enough hammering. Oh yeah, and these are the joist hangers I want to try to use for the stringers if I can. So ideally, find something to secure this with from behind down below and cut a new stringer and seat it into that and do a proper job. You can see this is all kind of rotting away. I need to be replaced eventually anyways when we I just hate this gray color. House is just gray on gray with some white. It's also filthy, it needs to be power washed, but again that's for another day. Just got to buy some new tools, get some new accessories. So finally, finally got a cordless drill. Got a Bosch, came with an extra 18 volt battery pack. I'm pretty happy with it so far. And then of course I couldn't find any of the bits I needed so I just went out and bought this and I was really surprised that for 10 bucks you can get this, which has like everything, even some stuff for bolts and uh, so I'm putting a, uh, sockets on there. I don't know how long they'll last, but for 10 bucks, hey, there's Ryobi. So. Let's get to it. Well, that was a lot harder than I expected. If it hadn't been for my neighbor's help, I'd still be out here trying to get these boards out. They were screwed, and they were nailed, and uh, some of the nails were the kind that don't really want to ever come out so we <laughs> use crowbars and chisels and pry bars and uh, hammers and we got it eventually out and now i'm thinking i should probably not think about trying to reuse the stringers because they're not in the greatest shape the rod especially was bad down here Ah, and I was also a little disappointed to see that. So here's the concrete footer. It's not in the greatest shape. It's tilting back that way. It should be tilting the other way. And it's not done very well. It's only halfway decent up to about here. And then it just degrades into loose rubble. 
Um, the stringer on this side is barely even supported. It's just hanging on the very edge down here. They threw in, I guess, two by four source, although I think that's more to hold on the plywood for where the siding is than anything else. And as for underneath, um, it's sort of, kind of, <laughs> I didn't realize, I thought the stringers ended here, but they go up higher. And I think they're nailed into that. And there's a two by four here, and there is a cement pad down here. Two by four is rotting away. Uh, but this is more substantial than I realized. I thought this was like one inch thick, and it's two. So, what I want to do is get out some uh, tape measure and paper and pencil and see what I can do. It would be great if I could use something in any possible way that's prefabbed and see if there's any way I can hang it off of this. Well, on this side, it's sitting a little bit on the inside. So I'm thinking if I move these over, I could hang them off of that. And I could get much longer ones of these. You can get them considerably longer, so they could be way down here, and it would be sent up further, and I could nail into that, because this is a pretty substantial piece of wood. It'd be nice if it went down further and was really more integrated into the deck, but it's something. And I was thinking I could put a 4x4 four four post behind it, some lag bolts, and put it on the uh, cement pad down there, and really support this properly, because it's... Eh. Anything's better than what was here. But I really, 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 really would like to use some prefab stuff. Um, so currently, so we got the deck, and then one, two, three, four, five, six wooden steps, and then the cement pad. Commonly, you can get the prefab stringers four steps, five steps. Um, but I've seen six and eight. They might be more like something you got to order. I'm not sure. I really don't want to have to cut one myself. I mean, I think I'm capable of it. <laughs> I got, uh, I got the tools. Uh, I would just rather not. And these, these are okay. Uh, this one's split out a bit underneath this board, and some of the nails broke off, so I have to contend with that. This, this, this one's in really rough shape over here. And then this one I want to move in further because it's not really on that cement pad. Hmm. So, yeah, good times. Nothing's easy. My neighbor and I were debating the pros and cons of just hiring somebody to do it versus doing it yourself. Because, yeah, if you do it yourself, maybe you can save some money. And, yeah, you know, that it was done right. Like, this certainly wasn't done right. On the other hand, if you hire somebody, like, bam, in a day it'd be done. And that would be that. Oh, well. Live and learn. Here's a little tour underneath. No idea how old this is. Certainly numerous rounds of repairs. Uh, there were some fairly modern deck screws on there, but also some old nails that were pretty disintegrated. And this is a siding that was on our house probably prior to what's on there now. So we have gray siding on with clapboards that are maybe three inches, and these are more like five or six inches, and it's white. And I know underneath this are shingles, and underneath that is the original wooden clapboards. Hey, it looks like a croquet mallet. <laughs> and rat traps everywhere. And behind this is a window that's right across from my workbench. So some of our neighbors, there's a number of houses that are identical all in a row. And, and um, some of them, the porch only goes, wraps around halfway. And this window is exposed, or they have lattice on here instead of plywood. So they get light coming in. I'd kind of like to do something like that. 
and I don't know why. Whoa, man. I don't know what's going on here, but it's like <laughs> it's like a friggin' sinkhole. But there is some concrete poured here and there or something. I know there was flooding in this area back in the day before they redid the sewers around here and put in a flood control system. I don't know what's up with this. Of course, lots of cobwebs. Yeah, it would be cool someday to just tear the whole thing off. The pads that poured look, look a little iffy. Oh, there's a rat carcass, man. <laughs> so I'm about to get swallowed up by the earth here, jeez. Alright, well, let's get out of here. <laughs> Slight change of plans now that I've really opened things up, got one of the stringers out, can see the underlying structure I realize is actually secured better than uh, I thought could be because I had th originally thought that the board ended around here, but no, it actually extended up and under. So all this is actually underneath the deck and they had it secured to some pretty beefy uh, lumber underneath. So that's what I'm going to do myself. Uh, I'm Slight change of plans. Not that I really had a solid plan to begin with, but now that I got one of the stringers out and I can see the underlying structure a lot better, I realized it was secured better at the top than it appeared because... Uh, it extended up further. I thought that this ended here. This was a top stop. I didn't realize that this continued up and underneath the, uh, the front porch, and it, that's where it was actually really secured. There's uh, a 2x10 or 2x12 running across and some uh, going the other way, and they had nailed this into that. I'll be using screws. It was a little bit of a pain to get this out, and that's why it splits. I had to use a pry bar to... To get up and under there. All right, so I want to cut some new ones. Can't get two by twelves. They had one, and it was really it was too chewed up to use. Plus, I needed three anyways. So I originally I thought I'd use one of those Primo boards. I bought one extra, and I thought that I'd use that to make one stringer and reuse the original two. The original stringers uh, just not in good enough shape. Um, you can see it rotted out down here. Uh, this is ground contact, pressure treated, meaning you can use it on the ground. This, from the way it smells when it, or it's split, I think this might just be untreated like Douglas fir or something. I don't, I don't think this is pressure treated lumber, which is another option. There's plenty of that to be had everywhere, but I kind of like this to last a while. So, what can you do? Well, I went to looking online, like, can you build stringers with smaller dimensional lumber? If you have to and I found a good video on YouTube by a guy who's written a bunch of books and about framing and seems to really know his stuff and he said yeah you can the main thing you never want to do is compromise this integrity so missing out on this little bit up here that's not your main load-bearing surface that's this you want the backbone to be strong so in his scenario he uh, you know ideally you get two by twelves or two by uh, two by 14s, and then you end up cutting out a lot of it to make a uh, space for the, for the run and rise of the steps. But what you can do is, if you say you got two by eights or two by tens, is you lay it out so that the meat of it is on the, the largest piece of wood, and then for these little bits, you can, uh, in this scenario, he puts up another board next to it, a small one, like a two by four or something, clamps the two boards together and lays it out and cuts out his pieces. And then it's up to you to attach these little triangular pieces how best you see fit. Glue it, drive a screw into it, or um, put a larger piece of wood. I mean, there's no reason why you can't double up these boards and, say, take some scraps and maybe use a square and screw it to the side of this to make that little uh, missing shelf bit. Or just leave them off entirely. 
I mean, I'm a, the, the mo be, meat of the step is going to be on this. I'm just losing this little itty bitty bit up there. So that's the plan. And I'm, I'm glad I've got a template because laying out stringers is not the most fun. Uh, there are calculators online and stuff. And I know there's a trick about how to figure out where to put this and where to put this and the angle and lay them out. What I'm going to do is just lay this on, on, lie this on each one of these boards and uh, mark it out, clean it up a little bit, maybe with this framing square, and then finally, finally get some power tools out. I got a radial saw, a Ryobi in there. Uh, this will be the thickest lumber I've ever tried to cut through, and uh, two of these boards are a bit dry. One of them is really green, meaning it's still super damp from the pressure treating operation this board weighs probably twice as much as the other two which i suspect will translate into it's going to be harder to cut through i got a few different blades you saw me maybe use this when i installed that glass door uh upstairs and i had uh, gone through a few different blades the blade that's in here right now I think is a, a pretty fine tooth blade. Um, I don't think that's going to work too well on this, but I believe I do have a framing. Yeah, this guy, this is a bit beefier. I think this is more of an all purpose coarser cut, so I'll give this a try. Probably be a good idea for me to do some practice cuts on the ends of one of these boards to see how it goes. So once I get those three done, uh, I'm going to attach them in the same method. I'm going to move the outer two in a little bit more so they're more uh, firmly on that concrete pad or cement pad. So that's the first step. And uh, finally, this thing will start to run back together. And these are what I'm going to use to secure the posts. So they'll be coming in somewhere around here. So I'll drill some holes and... Uh, this should be a little bit of fun too. See how good it is to drill through this stuff. And then uh, these two on the side. And uh, one from the front. Another rather expensive item. Four bucks for the bolt and throwing the nut in and a couple washers. You're looking at uh, five and a half, six bucks for each one of these. <laughs> so not an inexpensive proposition. That's one of the shorter ones. I'll use a shorter one from the front and because the front board won't be quite as thick that I'll be going through. So I think finally I've got everything I need. The only thing I haven't decided yet is will I bother with these little triangular bits. I figure I'll cut the main part of it kind of temporarily put them up front and see how they look, see how the boards fit on them and I might forego them entirely. Might not be up to code. I don't know. Uh, since there were only two originally, now I'm going to have three. Uh, I think it's going to be plenty strong enough. Here's how things are looking out front now. Picked up some tools of destruction. Made this go a whole lot faster. So once I brushed away the dirt, I found there actually was a decent uh, cement pad, concrete pad down here. So I knocked all this out. So this was the cheapo siding on some plywood with some rotted out 2 by 4s I just drove into the ground. I'm inclined to just leave that off. I've seen some of my neighbors just leave this wide open or I'll put, probably put some decorative lattice in here. So now it'll get ventilated and won't be quite such a musty tomb down here uh, anyways so the way they had these attached was the stringer came up under here and they attached it to this and to this so i will uh, install and that's like a, a two by six i think i'll put another one in the middle here to attach the new one uh, they think they, they uh, drove a nail or two into this as well, which is like a 2x12. So I, I originally had thought that these rotting out 2x4s that were sitting here were actually doing something, but no, they were just there to hold 
the siding, which I now see is just plywood and the siding is just tacked to it. So if we ever decided to take all this off, uh, huh, well, it'd be a little ugly <laughs> looking at how they did this foundation. So concrete and they put a four by four and then two by four sitting on top of that. And no support under where these two come together. It seems to me it would be a lot better to put a 4x4 four four underneath those two and put that on the pad. Uh, well, whatever. Project for another day. At least this, this seems to be pretty solidly put together. So now i got to bust this one out too. I think you can get a better idea probably over here how it's attached. So I thought that these had ended here, but now they come up and under and are nailed in on the side. I used the old stringer for a template best I could. And then I went over with this framing square and it looks like it's pretty darn close to where if I put this on five and seven, at the edge of the board, it lines up pretty well. That's what I meant by there's, there's tricks, um, especially if you've done this a while. If you want to get the right rise and run for standard size lumber and all that, there are certain points you put on your square, and then you just slide it along and, and so forth. Um, but luckily, I've got a template to use. So I'm going to do this one as best I can, make sure that uh, double check with this to make sure these are all the same size and except this one this one's a bit different on this end here that's where it hooks up underneath i'll test fit this if it all seems to be right i'll use this as the template for the other two and using that fine tooth uh, blade i did a test cut it seemed to cut this just fine so i don't think that's really going to be an issue here's how things currently stand after a weekend of hard work and uh, a lot of help from a neighbor. So we got the stringers done, got them all very well secured up above, started putting in some of the stair treads. Um, one thing that was unexpected though is these risers, uh, the vertical boards there, they're a little, a little tall, so I'm gonna have to trim them down a little bit, maybe like take a quarter inch off of each one. Table saw would be nice for it, but I'll have to make do with a uh, a radial saw and uh, got kind of an adapter that makes it a little bit easier to do ah and then the, the big the big thing left is are the posts so I wanted to put them so that they would be have good meat to, to bite into with lag bolts and to run up against the vertical board here which means basically they need to go right here on either side of four by four and there's kind of nothing there except dirt so he suggested well and we dig down and pour a footing for it, which I think would be a good idea because also these stringers are only attached to the top. At the bottom, this is how it was originally. They're just floating around down here. They're not attached to anything. So if we do a footer for the post, well, we got two choices. We could dig down deep enough and set the posts into the concrete or make a pad and then use a... Uh, I forget what they call them, but it's a piece of metal that will bolt to the post and then you would uh, drive some bolts into the, the concrete to anchor it. Uh, so that's what I'm pondering right now. Well, best to do that. Um, I think he's right that we should pour some concrete there. Another option is to just put on the dirt. I mean, this, these are graded for ground contact, these 4 by 4s back there. Uh, or just put get like a paver, a patio paver, like a, a foot a 12 by 12 square, 2 inch thick piece of concrete basically and just put it down there and put this on top um but yeah anyways i also have no idea what's down here it's annoying that it's right at the edge of this pad so underneath this dirt well it seems like there's just dirt so maybe we can dig down cleanly <laughs> you know, i want to put the post right where this ends if this had gone back another six inches or so uh i'd be in much better shape I'm almost done with all of the major cutting on all. I got the stringers done, got most of the steps cut down, and uh, the vertical boards. 
Got one left to cut, and some of them uh, needed to be trimmed up a little bit, uh, like a quarter of an inch taken off of the width. And at first I tried using this little gizmo attachment on my uh, radial saw. You attach that and then you ride it along the length. Uh, good luck. <laughs> After trying a couple of them, I gave up and just went out and rented a table saw. This big old uh, Makita. Uh, and I, I think I, well, I've been meaning to buy a table saw for quite some time, and I was surprised when I went. Uh, they're out. Um, so just like everything else, whatever, uh, tornado damage, people at home doing home improvement, COVID, uh, shortages abound, and table saws apparently are one of them. I went to two Home Depots, and they didn't have any table saws in stock at all. Uh, so I rented this to get it for four hours for like 45 bucks or something, but I still will be on the lookout for one because I'm sure I'll find plenty of uses for it in the future.